welcome back to our channel. So first and foremost, I definitely want to address the time that we are living in right now. Um, COVID-19 is here, it's happening. Um, I don't mean to be talking about it like it's a concert in town or anything like that. So yeah, Jordan and I, we are socially distancing ourselves from our friends here in Florida. We are staying inside of our apartment as much as we can. Um, I actually just flew into Florida from Toronto. My school semester is about to end and it is currently all digital. So um, yesterday I did fly in. I was one of five passengers on the flight. There were more cabin crew than there were passengers, which was pretty crazy to me. I've never ever experienced anything like that in my entire life. I do want to say I am quarantining, quar quarantining myself here in the apartment, but I am very, very happy to be back here in Florida with Jordan, with my cats, um, and just feeling very safe here at home. So all that being said, we are going to be spending a lot of time here at home for the near future. Um, here in Florida, um, our governor just declared a ent or an entire um, shelter in place for the entire state, which is absolutely the right thing to do if you have the means to stay inside, stay home, find things to do at home. <laughs> Jordan and I, we love to cook. We absolutely love to get our hands dirty. We love to try new recipes. So you are going to see a lot of these cooking videos in the near future. A lot of these recipes are going to be recipes that you can keep overnight, have a lot of leftovers for, keep it for the week, um, things like that. For today's recipe, we are going to make literally the easiest curry that you will ever have made. That being said, I want to use the term curry lightly. I call it a curry because I use curry powder, but I kind of made up this recipe in my head. It is in no shape or form culturally correct. Not a lot of ingredients. Um, it is vegan, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, because it's coconut milk, so it's vegan, vegetarian, um, and the recipe that I make definitely makes a lot. So you can have it for the week, you can meal prep it however you like, and it's just really delicious. So without further ado, let's get started. So here are just some of the spices that you'll need for the recipe. Of course, curry powder, paprika, cumin, and then there are some extra spices that I like to add for more flavor, but you definitely don't need to add them if you don't want to. And of course you have chickpeas, coconut milk, vegetable broth, a whole onion, some garlic, and then some fresh parsley as well. Now I'm just cutting up all of my vegetables first to have them ready and prepared before I actually start cooking them. So this is a whole onion that I'm going to use. I definitely give these a rough chop. They don't have to be neat by any means, but I do try to have them in kind of equal sized pieces so it all cooks evenly. Next we are doing the garlic and I love garlic. So I'm using four really big cloves here, but you definitely can do it to your liking. So here I'm giving them a rough chop as well. Please do not criticize my knife skills. I know I am not a professional chef, um, chef, but this just really needs to be cut up into small pieces so it can cook with the onions and the chickpeas. And of course, here's the fresh parsley. I like to cut all of my parsley or all of my herbs at once and keep them in an airtight container with a paper towel on top of them to keep them fresh because I use parsley a lot for different in, uh, uh, recipes um, and to have it ready like this just really helps like prep time and everything like that so now we're on to the chickpeas I am washing them and skinning them I know technically you don't have to de-shell them but I just always have if anyone has a better method of how to do this please let me know in the comments below because this is how I do it it's not super efficient and I don't like that the water has to run the entire time so yeah just let me know Sesame, do you like chickpeas? Oh, I really hope like chickpeas is not a poisonous thing for cats. Let me look that up. Do you like chickpeas? No, okay, stop. I know like June's kitchen lets uh, his cats like smell everything to become accustomed to it. Um, I just got really scared because I didn't know chickpeas were like toxic for cats or not. So that's why I put a towel over it and I was pushing him away. Um, otherwise we let like Spud and Sesame roam around the kitchen if they want to. Um, I know some people think that's gross. Mom, hi, talking to you. <laughs> but June's kitchen does it, and he lets his cat smell everything, and they're just so good in the kitchen. 
So that's why we let Spud and Sesame do it. Isn't that right? You love it. <laughs> Okie dokie. My tripod doesn't go any higher than that. Here, <laughs> let's see if I can fix this. Huh? Better? Better. Huh? Perfect? Almost perfect. All right. So I'm just letting some oil heat up in my pan right now. I chose a pan that has high sides. So I chose a pan that has high sides. Here, you can like see it here. Like that. Um, because I like to make my curry a little bit saucier because um, I eat it with rice or potatoes and I like that sauce to like soak into the rice or potatoes. <laughs> but this recipe is like so customizable. It's all up to you what you want to do. Um, so I let my oil heat up on high, but then I turn it back down to medium just so nothing burns. Now I have my bowl of washed and skinned chickpeas. I'm gonna throw them into here first. You should hear a sizzle just like that. My favorite noise in the world. Um, and this step, uh, I like to think it makes my chickpeas like a little crunchier. Oh, the sizzle went away. <laughs> but it's nice to kind of get the chickpeas like hot and like warm all the way through because they are a little bit thicker. So just to kind of cook them first. So we're just gonna let these sit a little bit and let them get a little hotter. I'm like waiting for that sizzle noise. <laughs> So while the chickpeas are heating up in the pan, um, I just want to season them with salt and pepper. So yeah, I skinned these chickpeas and yet there are still even more skins coming off of them right now, which is super annoying. But again, I have no freaking idea if we even need to skin them at all. I know so many people eat them with the skins on. Clueless here, help, help a girl out with her chickpea adventure. So the chickpeas are popping. I really hope I don't get oil on this camera. This stove seems to be a little hotter than the one that I had in Toronto. So we're gonna try to move fast here. But now it's time for the spices. I'm showing you this up close because I do not have measurements for the spices at all. So this is the amount that I put in. We're doing the curry first. I personally love the taste of curry, so I just put a lot in. Next we do the paprika and that looks good. <laughs> you can put more in later. So I'm just like doing it to initially season the chickpeas. So that was just cumin here that I put in and I put in only a little bit for now. These chickpeas are also like a little softer than the ones that I get in Toronto. So they are getting a little mushy, but I mean, honestly that's okay. Cause a chickpea is a chickpea and it'll taste the same mushed or hard. So that's okay. Um, but now I'm going to put in my onions and my garlic. So I put in my garlic, or sorry, my onions first. I'm turning up the heat a little bit um, because I want to sweat the onions a bit and garlic also burns faster than onions. So I'm going to put the garlic in probably when the onions are like almost translucent. Honestly, I play it by ear every time. <laughs> okay, so onions and garlic are in and they are pretty cooked through. So now I'm going to put in my coconut milk. Hi, Jordan got home. I'm only going to put about half a can of coconut milk to start. I put more like a third of a coconut can, coconut milk can. But this is another thing that's just to taste um, and also to liking because I, again, like mine like pretty saucy for the um, rice or potatoes that I eat it with. Um, I also like the taste of the coconut milk and the curry, so it's really just up to you what you like. Sorry, I can't be more specific. So now I'm also putting in the vegetable broth and I'm putting just about the same amount of vegetable broth to um, coconut milk. Again, change it however you would like. Now we're gonna give that a good stir and then we're gonna add in the other spices as well. Oh yeah, that's plenty of liquids. And also the liquids, they get um, absorbed into the chickpeas as well. So you're gonna lose a little bit of liquid as well but you also can just add more liquid later if you want to. So this is about the consistency that I like mine. This is really hard because the pan spins. So when I have the camera in one hand, the pan spins when I'm stirring. You want me to hold the camera? No, 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 I'm just telling you. So now I'm gonna put in my other spices. I actually, I'm gonna add a little bit more curry because I like curry, that was a lot. <laughs> um, a little bit more cumin, a little bit more of the three that we put in before, so. Just a little bit. There we go. And then some more paprika. Now for the like 
extra spices. Again, if you don't have these, it's a-okay. I just like to add a little bit more for more like depth of flavor. So this is turmeric. I'm not putting in too much. Then I have the garam masala. Ooh, it smells so good. I'm only putting in that much. <laughs> but I love garam masala though. It tastes so good. And then a little bit of chili powder. That's good, and it depends just how much you like your spiciness. Oh, I forgot something. You can also add sriracha, which I'm gonna do right now, um, to add spiciness, because I really like it spicy. Um, or you could add like the chili garlic paste from the same like sriracha company, like with the rooster and stuff on it. That's what I usually use, but we don't have any here. So I'm just gonna use sriracha. Sriracha. Again, this is all to taste. I'm just gonna put that much. You forgot Greek yogurt. Nuts. So I just threw in some parsley, and honestly, that's like it. <laughs> so you can see how it got a little bit thicker. I think that was definitely due to the chickpeas being a little bit mushier, but also because they soak up all the sauce. So you can see there's not as much liquid. Um, it's definitely thicker, but you just want to let this simmer on like low because it is ready technically, but you really do want those flavors to all, you know, meld together, combine, get really good in there. This is also another dish that's like pasta sauce, you know, like the day after it does taste better because all the juices and everything and the flavors get to combine really well overnight. Um, but we're gonna eat it right now. Here is the final product. This is mine. I just put some fresh parsley on top. We have Greek yogurt on the side and I put extra sriracha on mine as well. And then here's Jordan's, basically the same, just no sriracha. Okay, Jordan, this is his first time trying mine. Here goes nothing. Mm. Do a real reaction. That's very good, Emmy. Yay. There's a really good depth of flavor. You used all those extra spices, uh -huh. so good tip and everything else is good. So follow this recipe and you can be eating just as good as me. <laughs> I also just want to note the thump that came from over there was Spud. She jumped down from the counter. That's what that noise was. But anyway, so that's the recipe. Again, it is literally the easiest like curry, curry recipe that you will ever try. Um, we have a bunch of leftovers now and um, we're eating it with rice. You can also eat it with like just roasted potatoes or something like that. Or you just eat it alone, honestly, like it's that good. Jordan, are you gonna make the next recipe? I can try. So if you wanna see more cooking videos with us, because again, we love to cook and we love to share food, um, definitely give this video a like, comment down below what you wanna see next, and make sure to subscribe. Bye. Bye.